Hello everyone, I'm Yunsu from Georgia Tech. Today I'm going to talk about automatic techniques to systematically discover new heap exploitation primitives. This is joint work with my colleague Dabba Kapil and my advisor Tess Kim. As we already know, heap vulnerabilities are very common and serious security issues. According to Microsoft, 39% of CVs in 2018 are related to heap vulnerabilities. One way to exploit this vulnerability is using heap exploitation techniques. Heap exploitation techniques, we call HET for short, abuse underlying allocator to achieve more powerful primitive for exploitation in the presence of the vulnerabilities. This is preferable because it is application agnostic. In other words, it only depends on the underlying allocators. And it is powerful by changing seemingly weak vulnerability into very powerful primitive. For example, we can convert off by one null byte overflow into arbitrary code execution using heap, heap exploitation technique. As a result, heap exploitation techniques are widely used to exploit multiple applications. One of the most famous heap exploitation technique is called unsafe unlink. To explain this, we first look at unlink mechanism in ptmalloc2, which is Linux's default allocator. In ptmalloc2, a heap object we call a chunk is managed by the, a doubly linked list with two pointer ft and bk. ft points to the next free chunk, bk points to the previous free chunk. If we want to remove a chunk in this doubly linked list, unlink happens with this code. First, a chunk updates its backward pointer of the forward pointer with chunk's backward pointer. Then it updates its forward pointer of the backward pointer with its forward pointer. And then it removes the chunk. If an attacker can corrupt these internal structures with memory corruption, they can abuse this behavior for exploitation. For example, if it overrides its FD into an object with a function pointer and backward with the evil function, the unlink mechanism will be converted into the arbitrary write, modifying the function pointer into the evil function. Finally, the attacker can hijack control by calling the corrupted function pointer. This technique is called unsafe unlink. To prevent this, ptmalloc2's developer put a security check to ensure that the object has a legitimate form. However, this check is still bypassable, but it makes the heap exploitation technique more complicated. To handle such complexities, researchers have studied reusable heap exploitation techniques. Starting from the, the famous frack magazine, Once Upon a Free, there are many works related to the heap exploitation technique. However, all analyses are manual, ad hoc, and allocator specific. Such manual analysis have several problems. First, existing analysis are highly biased to certain allocators because of its large amount of manual efforts. Even though there are several, many allocators have been developed, researchers mostly have focused on the ptmalloc2. There are a few work related to the tcmalloc and jmalloc. There is no security analysis for other allocators such as diehard and mimalloc. Second, an allocator needs to be reanalyzed if it has some changes. An allocator can be evolving if its implementation is changed. We require to have another manual analysis to understand its security implications of these changes. For example, recently ptmalloc2 adopts a new feature called the thread local cache. After this, researchers have analyzed the security implications and discovered new heap exploitation techniques related to this feature. This should be happen every time in the manual analysis. Our research question is how can we automate this task? Our key idea is to make machine to autonomously explore spaces to find the heap exploitation techniques similar to fuzzing. Our tool, RKIP, keeps generating a set of heap actions and finally discover a certain set of actions that can be used for the exploitation, which what we call heap exploitation technique. However, this is not trivial. There are several technical challenges. First, the search space of heap exploitation technique is very large. Second, we should find an efficient way to evaluate heap exploitation technique. First, we will discuss how to handle large search space. Heap exploitation technique consists of many heap actions and each space is very large. For example, we have legitimate actions such as allocation, deallocation, heap write, and buffer write. Moreover, we also need to simulate buggy actions to discover heap exploitation techniques such as overflow, write after free, double free, and arbitrary free. Each parameter also has large search space. For example, in our location, we have 2 to the 64 candidates. Heap write space is even larger. It has size p times 2 to the 64 candidates. To handle this, Archive reduces search space using model-based search based on the common designs of allocators. We have observed several common designs in allocators regardless of their underlying implementation. First one is binning. It means that the allocators specially manage chunks in the different size group because for small chunks, 
performance is more important for the unallocator and for the large chunk, it more carefully handles its memory footprint. For example, PTM malloc has fast bin and small bin. Fast bin does not have merging mechanism, but small bin has. Thus, if we sample a size uniformly in 2 to the 6 to 4 space, the probability of getting fast bin becomes extremely low. To handle this, RKIP selects an allocation size aware of binning. RKIP samples size in exponentially distant size group. RKIP partitions an allocation size into four groups. RKIP first selects a group and then selects a size in the group uniformly. Thus, the probability of choosing fast bin size would be much higher than before. It, it, it will be greater than the probability of choosing the first group, which is one of the fourth. We also found that allocators share other common designs, cardinal data and in-place metadata. Cardinal data represent the metadata contain only size and pointer, not random value for efficiency. In-place metadata illustrate that allocators place metadata near its chunk's start or end for locality, not random position. Cardinal data and in-place metadata also help us to reduce search space. For example, if we generate a heap write, our clip choose value size and pointer related values, not random value like a dead bit. Our clip randomly select size or use other chunk size. For point value, it uses other chunk, buffer, or container, which is an array that stores other chunks. Moreover, our clip limits its write location into the start or the end of the chunk instead of random position. Next, we will discuss how RKIP efficiently evaluates a potential heap exploitation technique. One way to evaluate heap exploitation technique is to synthesize a full exploit. However, this is inappropriate in evaluating heap exploitation techniques. First, automatic exploit generation is a very difficult problem, particularly for heap exploits. For example, in DARPA CJC competition, only one heap bug was successfully exploited. Second, the automatic exploit generation is usually inefficient. One try can take a few seconds, minutes, or even hours. Finally, automatic exploit generation is application dependent. However, a useless heap exploitation technique in a certain application might be useful in other application. To overcome these issues, we evaluate impacts of the exploitation instead of making a full exploit. Impacts of the exploitations are the broken invariants that have security implications. First invariant is that allocated memory should not be overlapped with pre-allocated memory. If the allocator violates this, it will result in overlapping chunk or arbitrary chunk. Second, an allocator should not modify the memory which is not under its control. If we violate this, it results in the arbitrary or restricted write. The first invariant is easy to check by using allocation information. What about the second one? Note that this detection should be efficient to search large space of the heap exploitation techniques. To do that, Archive uses shadow memory to detect the arbitrary writes and the restricted writes. In every action which can change its internal data structure, we also update its shadow memory. For example, in allocation, we update a container, and in buffer write, we update a global buffer. Then, in every action such as allocation, deallocation, heap write, and buffer write, we check whether the shadow memory's contents diverge. This divergence means that heap allocator internally modifies memory in the container or global buffer, which is not heap. Thus, this can be converted into the arbitrary or restricted write. For further analysis, ARC provides a minimized POC code written in C. This is trivial because every action has one-to-one -one mapping with the C code. ARC also minimizes POC code using delta debugging. Basically, it eliminates an action that is not required to trigger the impact of the exploitation. We want to answer the following evaluation question. First, how effective is RKIP in finding new heap exploitation techniques compared to the existing tools heap hopper? Second, how general is RKIP's approach? RKIP discovers five new heap exploitation techniques in PTMLOC2, which cannot be discovered by the heap hopper. First technique is called unsorted bin stack. This requires fewer steps than the existing one. Another technique, House of Unsorted INR, converts OPI1 null byte into the arbitrary chunk without heap address link. Unaligned double free is the first technique that abuses double free in the small chunk bin, which has more checks than the fast bin. These techniques cannot be discovered by existing true heap hopper because of its scalability issues coming from its underlying techniques, symbolic execution, and model checking. 
Archive's technique is also generic enough to test various allocators. We have tested 10 different allocators. Archive fails to find heap exploitation technique in three allocators, LVM Scudo, FreeGuard, and Guarder, which are secure allocators. First, we want to mention that Archive successfully discovered heap exploitation technique in allocators that are not related to ptmalloc2, which shows its generality. Second, it even can find the heap exploitation techniques in secure allocators such as MIMalloc Secure and Die Harder. We want to share several interesting case study. First one is that heap exploitation technique converting double free to overlapping chunk in Die Harder and MIMalloc Secure. If we double free a lot, very large chunk, it results in the overlapping chunk. We found that the same thing happens in both Die Harder and the MIMalloc. Interestingly, these issues are irrelevant. We reported this issue to the MIMalloc developer, whether MIMalloc has certain relationship with the die harder, the answer was no. After analysis, we found that if we double free a very large chunk, die harder missed the check and the MIMalloc's check was wrong. Note that our auto-generated POC has been integrated into a MIMalloc's regression test. Second one is the heap exploitation technique that converts overflow into the arbitrary chunk in the latest DMLOG. Note that DMLOG is PDMLOG2's ancestor, but has been diverged after its fork. Thus, this heap exploitation technique only works for the DMLOG, not PDMLOG2. This POC requires several memory sizes and looks complicated. Interestingly, its root cause is more complicated. Several sizes are required to set up a special flag in the DMLOG, use memory map instead of SBRK, and cause the underflow. This kind of behavior is easy to miss by manual analysis, which shows benefits of automated method like an archive. Definitely, archive solution is not perfect. First, it is incomplete, unlike hip hopper, which is complete under its model. However, due to its scalability issue, hip hopper's model cannot be complete. Second, it can have overfitting issue. Our strategy might not work for certain allocator. However, in practice, Archive's model is quite generic and discovers several heap exploitation techniques in different allocators. Finally, Archive only focuses on finding heap exploitation technique and does not ge generate end-to-end -end exploit like an uh, existing automatic exploit generation tool. I want to conclude this talk. We have discussed the automatic ways to discover heap exploitation techniques using model-based search and shadow memory-based detection. As a result, Archive discovered five new techniques in PTMalloc2 and several ones in other allocators, including Die Harder and MIMalloc Secure. We want to emphasize that our tool is released as an open source, so please try Archive if you want to find the new heap exploitation techniques in your allocators. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them.